Hello, future people of the Literary Arts Magazine. Yay! Hi, I'm Julia. If you're watching this this year, you probably know me. And if you're watching it next year, you probably don't know me. But, um, I last year helped with the design for the entire Lit Mag, and Aisha requested that I made a video um, on how to design for your Lit Mag. Now, there's no, like, definitive way to do this, um, but we're- I'm just kind of going to talk about, like, the thought process involved and the basic steps to creating the design for the lit mag. So, um, I guess we'll start at the very beginning. When you make the literary arts magazine, it is important that we have a theme. Now, hopefully by the time next year rolls around, um, or I guess the year that you guys are probably watching this, you all already have a theme. Like, I intend to help come up with one at the end of this year. Uh, my idea, actually, I want to do the Vitruvian bird theme, but, you know, no one thought that was good. Um, but you know what? Maybe, maybe you, maybe you guys are making a Vitruvian bird lit mag right now. I don't know. Anyway, so the theme. The theme has to carry throughout the entire lit mag. There has to be multiple elements. Usually, these are from Creative Market, um, and these little, like, swirlies are from, I think they're from Freepick, but they might be from Envato. I'm not sure. I think, I think they're from Freepick. Um, but anyway, multiple elements that carry throughout the entire magazine. So, you also need a color palette. This is my color palette. And you also need different elements to include in your design that will be consistent throughout the magazine. Um, and also along with that comes like font packaging and all that. So I'm going to go over everything. This video is probably going to be like 30 minutes long. But we'll see. So, coffee house is the theme here. The sections are divided um, into four different sections that all have different feels. We have latte for like, it's not exactly, I think latte was like, um, like happier pieces espresso with more energetic pieces, Americano is more like depressing pieces, and affogato is like sweet, lovey pieces. I'm pretty sure that was like our thought process there. But anyway, um, I decided to assign every single section a color. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't believe you actually have to do that. I think you just can have like something that differentiates them. For me, that was color because that's how I like to organize things, but that is up to whoever your editor-in-chief next year is. Um, and I also had these little things too, like little icons that were consistent. And you can see those repeated in our folios. These are the folios. You use the, well, these be called master pages. Oops, not import. Huh. These be called master pages, but I think now they're called parent pages. You use the parent pages to set up these folios right here. Those are the page numbers. And those carry throughout the entire section. So um, we actually, this isn't the final version of the lit mag, but we actually end up changing them. So like the color was taken from the images. But, like, you can see that they have the little coffee cup, and if you go to the next section, um, Americano, yeah, this is not, like, the finished version, but Ameri or, uh, Espresso has, like, a darker color, and it, it kind of is consistent, so that's something that's kind of important to do. Um, a kind of a checklist, I suppose, for what needs to, sorry, this is very laggy because Gmetrics is a virus. Anyway, um, kind of like a checklist for what needs to be designed. The cover should have elements from the entire Literary Arts magazine. This is our cover. Um, we don't, I think we only reuse this, I don't think we use the, br the brick wall, like, at all, but the colors are kind of consistent with the opening spread. Um, so yeah, you have the cover, and you have the opening spread, which this will be, like, the back part of the front cover, and this is just, you know, the volume, the year, and, like, the name of the magazine, and it also kind of has, like, these elements, you know, it has, like, this is for Latte, this is for Americano, but then it has these other, like, coffee elements, so you can incorporate things. But we also kind of, like, Aisha really was into, like, the whole chalkboard thing, so I have this secondary spread in the, t in the table of contents, or the, sorry, the secondary style, I guess, in the table of contents, which is, like, the, co the coffee house, like, chalkboard-looking thing. Um, and then that carries over to, I, for I don't know what this is called. This isn't the opening page. This is, like, the introduction, I suppose. There's a name for this. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the introduction. And then you have the divider pages. So all of the divider pages look the same pretty much. I have latte up there, um, I have espresso, and there's like Americano and affogato all kind of look like the same thing. But I just, there's a couple differences. I took the main color that I used, which by the way, I, I like the idea of using like a single color to represent each section. Not to say that that section has to be designed in that color, but just kind of to organize it like either in the folios or just, or even if it's just in the dividers. I kind of like that because it feels, it makes it feel more like, a consistent magazine that ties together. So anyway, um, I have the color of each section in each divider along with the icon or like the image. This is the image that goes with it. So like, for example, I'm going to use my, um, 
Vitruvian bird theme as an example, and you guys probably won't end up using that theme because I think I'm the only person in the world who thinks that's, who thinks that's a good idea, but, like, the Vitruvian bird one, like, my suggestion was to do, like, a wing section, and a beak section, and a talon section, so, like, the wing section would probably have, like, on this page you'd have feathers, and you'd maybe have, like, a green or a blue, and the beak, maybe you'd use, like, a yellow or something, and you'd have, like, bird seed, or, like, whatever birds eat, you know, or, like, music notes for singing birds, and then the talons, you'd have, like, sharper lines and, like, claws, and maybe an orange, or, you know what I'm saying, like, something like that, um, like, little elements that carry over, and they have to be represented, represented on your opening spread, but also I have this little design element, this line, that is consistent, right, but as you can see, whatever one, whichever color ha went with that, um, section, that is what I used for, like, the larger line, and the others are complementary, so that's kind of what you want to keep in mind. As far as actually making the, like, pages of the Lit go, um, there's only, I think, like, four or five paragraph styles we used. It's relatively simple. These deviate a little bit, because it's, like, the, uh, the cover and the opening page, but for example, like, let me go down. So this right here, this is in the same font as our regular headlines. This is just, or, I'm not even headlines, they're titles. I'm thinking in newspaper, but anyway, so these are section titles. I have a paragraph style for that, but it's the same font, just slightly bigger. Um, than our actual titles, um, and then we have our body copy, the body copy, what's really important, I just use Georgia, and then the drop cap is in Mermaid, which is the same font as this, it doesn't, like, I feel like the body copy font, honestly, doesn't matter that much, like, you can use Georgia every single year, and I think no one would notice, body copy ha just has to be readable, usually any, like, relatively thin serif font, like, will be fine and very readable, I like Georgia, because, as I said, it's easy to read, um, other, by the way, serif fonts are the ones that have, like, these little feet, you see how there's, the D has a little foot, the K is a foot, the L is a foot, obviously the O's don't have feet, um, these are also serif fonts, as opposed to, like, a sans serif, like, uh, like, like, uh, uh, do we only use serif fonts? No, this is a, uh, mm, yeah, we only use serif fonts. Interesting, okay, I thought I used a sans serif, but I must have, this is a sans serif. No, it's not, it's a serif. Wow, I guess we did not use any sans serif fonts. That's crazy. Anyway, but yeah. So any like anything like that will be readable. You make the paragraph styles, by the way. Like if you want to make a paragraph style, um, I'll show you how to do that. But you'll figure it out really quickly because it's extremely easy. So like if I type some text here, right, and I want it to be in, uh, let's just do, I like this font. Let's do this font, like this size and this color. Okay, if I want that to be our style, I'll come here, I'll hit the plus sign, it will make it, it's called paragraph plus, double click to rename, I'm naming it text, oh, why did it go back, hello, uh, why, what, okay, so now if I use that same style right here, it should, yeah, alright, there you go, I don't know why it, like, went back, there you go, though, but that's how you do it, you just click that little button, and it creates it, and it will always have the same color, um, if something has a plus sign next to it right here, that means that something's different. In this case, the thing that is different that's, like, deviating from the style is just the color because we change it on every single page. So, like, the color of the title will match the image. So, alright, these are not good examples. Alright, here. So, parallel, you know, it has the pink and the yellow. Um, the images were, ta were taken off, but Stuck With You has the orange from her jacket. Um, House on the Hill. The hill has this right here. So it kind of it kind of goes along with it. Um, you do that by the way by selecting, double clicking here, drag and drop the eyedropper, just hold it down, and you can select the color, and that is how that works. So as far as actually making the pages go, so prior to actually begin beginning any design, you have to sort through submissions, and you have to go through what you have and pair every like piece of um, me or every piece of literature up with art. So when you do have everything. You can, you want to kind of stick with like this the same sort of style. You want to make sure like you're having a large featured image. You want to have hierarchy in your design, meaning you have a featured image, um, you have a title, you have to have credits for everything, and you can also make your own styles for the credits. That's what we did. Um, when you're crediting people for art, you you credit the name of the art piece, the name of the person, their grade level, and then the medium. Um, whereas for the writing, you just do the name, the grade level, and like the type of writing it is, because the title's already over here. So, there's not, like, I should have told me to, like, explain how to, like, make the pages. There's not really a how to make it. Like, you, if you, there's, I mean, LitMag, honestly, has a good amount of creative liberty. 
But, like, my workflow in general for making, like, anything, not just this, is whatever you know you're going to need on to have on the page, just throw it on the page, okay? So, like, if I'm, I mean, I'm not going to add, I, I, I guess a lot of pages here. Oh, yeah, also, I didn't mention this, colophon, um, someone has to write this, and it goes in the back. Okay, anyway, so, if I'm making something, what I'm going to do is I will just take, I'm going to remake this page. Okay, um, I will take the text and I'll just copy paste it onto the page like hello all right it's being very laggy but I would copy paste it onto the page I'd throw the credit on um and then I would type like child it's good to have two headline fonts because it looks they complement each other nicely so child child soldier soldier wow um I'd put my picture on and I would do this and then from there that's where I would work it out work it out because you don't really like you can't really start until you know like how big your art piece is so I'm like okay um art piece is this size and this one looks like it's going to fit on one page, so I'll put it over here, and you know what, maybe I'll make it bleed off. If you have anything bleed off the page, meaning that's going to go to the very edge, it has to touch the red line, that is the blue line. Okay, and um, you're going to click this button, make sure the artwork scaled properly, it is, if it wasn't, it would have just adjusted it uh, just now. But yeah, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to do this, alright, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm making a slightly different design. Maybe I'd want to have this gold, or no, I'm, I'll make it purple. Let's make a purple box. Like, you could, there's no right answer in design. Something that a lot of people, I feel like, really struggle with when doing anything in, like, the graphics field is thinking, like, okay, how do I do this? This isn't right. There's a right way to do it. There's not a right way to do it. There's just a lot of wrong ways to do it. Like, a wrong way to do it would be not to include hierarchy or to make it unreadable or to make it inconsistent with the rest of your package. That is That is the wrong way to do it anything else most for the most part so f so long as it follows like the elements of the or the principles of design most of the rest of those things are the right way to do it there's not like a single right way to do it okay so maybe i want to make this i'll go to tariff styles and i'll do titles and there it's disappeared because it got too big for the box so this was the title maybe i'll make this white you know like i'm just playing around with it and i could do this like oh yeah yeah that doesn't look good i want to change it and whatever but like as you can see i'm making a layout right now um that is completely different than the layout that we had of like in the other one okay it just really depends on what you want to do with your design because like i said there's a million there's a million right like right answers and there's a million wrong answers right but there's just whatever you want to do um credit for this should go near like the bottom of the text you want to make it clear i mean like it is clear because obviously this isn't a poem and that is not an art piece. That is like a, that's not digital art. But you still want to like put them with a good proximity to one another. Um, another thing, don't be afraid of white space. Like you don't want to be like, okay, yeah, this looks really empty because there's all this white space. Like no, white space is good. If it looks cramped, it's gonna make you look amateur. It's gonna make your design look bad because your design looks very cramped. You need breathing room. You need white space. So white space is a good thing, especially in LibMag. Honestly, the best suggestion I can make. Um, would be to just look up well what all right, once you have the style packaging um, and once you have the fonts or whatever look up uh, principles of design and kind of read through that and get an understanding of what those are like balance hierarchy um, my brain is like dead right now I'm sorry anyway <laughs> I do I promise I do know the principles of design I have a different video on that if you're interested um, I can link it it's like an InDesign video you know I will, I'm gonna link my my main InDesign playlist that I uh, required newspaper to watch just because it might be useful. But anyway, so like, yeah, balance, hierarchy, white space, like all the principles of design, make sure you're following those. Um, and then make sure that you're incorporating, oops, incorporating common like themes throughout your design. And you should, you should really be good. So like, okay, this is another potential design for this page. It is actually kind of similar to what we had, but like any of this works. And another thing, I have these little chalk elements. I also was changing the color of those. These are to keep consistency. Like, it's nice if your lip mag looks a little different than everyone else's lip mag. Like, you should be able to look at your lip mag and say, okay, this is a page from Coffee House. It's not from Fruit Salad, it's from Coffee House. Like, you want to know that. Like, these chalkboard pieces, those repeat. So another suggestion I would have when making this is just to take, like, four or five design elements, slap them onto a page, and, like, copy-paste from there. Like, okay, there's some, like awkward space like obviously this one doesn't fit well i'd probably use the other one but uh that's not the point so the point is take like a few design elements slap them onto a page and be like okay 
if we have some room we want to fill up, if we want to create a better sense of balance, we'll take one of these elements. Because not only am I about to use this to balance the page out, um, but I'm also using it to create that sense of unity, which is another L or another principle of design. So yeah, like this looks better. Okay, it looks good because it has something. It has something from uh, the main theme of like of the magazine. So anyway, that is basically how you do lip mag design. Honestly, beyond that, it's just about knowing the program. But as I said, I'm gonna link my beginner videos in the description of here. Uh, the description. Well, that's not English. In the description of this. If you are a newspaper in the uh, during the what year is it 2022 2023 school year, you've already seen these videos, but feel free to rewatch them as I'm making them as public videos. So yeah, if you have any questions, you could ask me. Um, I don't know if I don't again. I I should ask me to make this video. I don't know um, when this is going to be watched. So if you don't like know who I am, if you're watching this in the future, then this is my phone number nine five four seven five six one four three two. Text me, call me, just say you saw my lip mag video and have a question, um, and I will answer you. Anyway, that is it. Thank you, and hopefully that answers all of your questions.